Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Hopefully you're having a great Thursday. It is Master's Week. Like you didn't know. <laughs> like you didn't know it was Master's Week, but it is Master's Week. My favorite time of the year. It's my absolutely favorite sporting event of the year. It's great. So I'm super excited. Hopefully the weather's not too bad. Uh, I know that uh, I'm recording this on Wednesday night, so just watch the Par 3 contest, all that. But uh, hopefully the weather isn't too bad on Thursday. I know they're saying it's going to be rain, thunderstorms, whatever. Hopefully it's not too bad. We get the day in, and uh, I'm excited to watch some golf. So this is, uh, like I said, my, my favorite uh, sporting event of the year. Uh, I love sitting down and watching it, and it's going to be a whole whole lot of fun. So hopefully we've got a good uh, good tournament. Hopefully we get a real close one come Sunday. And before we get into today's episode, just I wanted to let you know this episode is brought to you by Titleist and Team Titleist. So we're excited to share with you guys exclusive opportunities from Titleist, but to be a part of them, you have to join Team Titleist. Team Titleist gives you access to opportunities like prototype testing, special events, limited edition gear from Titleist, and so much more. Sign up and join us on Team Titleist at www.titleist.com forward slash Team Titleist. One word, Team Titleist. So check it out. It's a pretty cool community. Uh, I signed up a few years ago. Anytime you see like on, uh, you know, like Instagram or Twitter or, you know, whatever, people showing off those like white boxes of prototype golf balls, they're a Team Titleist member. So if you want to test prototypes and stuff like that, Team Titleist is the only way to do it. So sign up, uh, sign up today. So hopefully, uh, again, Masters Week. I'm excited. It's uh, It's been exciting to watch. Uh, it was fun watching the Part 3 contest. Uh, hopefully I'm not doing any spoilers. This is coming out the day after, but uh, congratulations to Ricky. Uh, big win for him. I know people always have the whole, uh, you know, if you win the Part 3, you can't win the tournament or nobody's ever done it, so it's the jinx, whatever. Uh, but uh, I'm hoping to see good things from Ricky. I'm, I'm, I'm a Ricky fan. Hopefully we'll see some good things from him through the weekend. But uh, he did pull off the par three, so I guess we can, you know, if you bet on him to win, that's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you. So, <laughs> But, uh, no, it's been uh, been a great uh, week weather-wise here in Metro Detroit. Getting out on the course. I went and played the other day. Been hitting balls. Uh, it's just been fantastic. Uh, the only downside, you know, uh, is got a you know the only the only thing that kind of brought my day down got a sick kid, which is a, always a bummer. Uh, so that's never fun. But other than that, uh, we've got some great weather. League starts up next week, so next week's show is going to be what's in the bag for the first week of league night, which is insane. I'm super excited. I don't even know what's going in the bag yet. Uh, I've been hitting some stuff. I was out, uh, like I said, I played uh, the other day. I played Tuesday night uh, with a buddy of mine. We went out and played. Just went to St. Clair Shores. Uh, got paired up with uh, with a guy I know, Nick, who uh, is a, a follower, at least on Instagram. Uh, if you want to follow on Instagram, at Club Junkie Pod. But uh, I don't know if he listens to the show, but he follows on Instagram. And uh, super nice guy. Got a really nice bag set up. He's like a ZX7 guy. Uh, I think there's ZX7 Mark IIs with a ZX7 Mark II 5 iron. And uh, he's got like a you know, ping G430 driver. So he's got a nice setup. Uh, I can't remember what, I think he's got a Cameron fastback, uh, but a really nice bag. Uh, he's got a really good setup. Uh, him and his buddy, we just got kind of got randomly paired up. Uh, him and I played earlier in the year we met, uh, but uh, I played terrible uh, for the most part. Actually, I started off terrible. Uh, the first like three holes, I played awful. And then I, I started to get it back a little bit. I couldn't putt uh, to save my life. And uh, the wedges were a little bit of a struggle, but uh, once I get the short game turned around, the rest of the time I, I was hitting the ball okay. But uh, off the tee, I was brutal the first three holes. It was like I didn't even have a swing. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, after that, I kind of you know figured a little bit out and was at least uh, getting the ball out and play. But it was a whole lot of fun. Had uh, had a good time. And, uh, yeah, we've got uh, league starting up. It's going to be uh, pretty crazy. I can't believe uh, we're starting up uh, league night already. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be, you know, what's in the bag going on. So it's going to be a whole lot of fun. I've got seven days to figure out what's in the bag. I have an idea of what's going. But uh, I do not know 100% yet uh, what it will be in the bag. But we'll get into that uh, next week. So, But I have been messing around with uh, a couple different things. I've actually been messing around with a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited for the next few, you know, couple weeks because I've got uh, some great stuff to talk about, great stuff to hit, uh, just a, a whole lot uh, going on. So uh, I've got driver shafts, I've got bags, I've got a uh, new push cart coming, I've got you know a putter, I've got just you know a bunch of stuff. So it's 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 pretty cool. I got irons, wedges, you know, iron shafts. We've got tons of stuff to review, tons of stuff to talk about, tons of stuff to hit. So it's going to be a whole lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, so I've been messing around, uh, been, you know, I've, I've been to the range, been to the dome, went out and played, been hitting balls in my backyard, been trying to do it a little bit. Uh, I definitely got to get out there and, uh, and hit some more to work on, uh, work on the game. But uh, other than that, it's been good, but been going out there, been messing around a little bit. And, uh, yeah, the first thing we're going to talk about today's show is a golf bag. So it's a golf bag that I've had in my possession, uh, for a while. 
I just haven't had a chance to use it yet because uh, I haven't been going out and play. I've been using it. I've been taking it to the range, taking it to uh, the dome, uh, using it even just to like take clubs outside uh, to go hit balls in. Uh, so I've been using it a, a decent amount and getting familiar with it. Uh, but I finally got it out on the course and everything uh, just recently as well. But I've been messing around with it, and it is from Ghost Golf. So if you haven't heard of Ghost Golf, uh, they make tons of accessories, stuff like that, uh, and they're Any Day Bag. And they make the Any Day Bag, which I'll try to put up here on YouTube. If you're, not, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can uh, Golf the Bricks Radio or to search Club Junkie. But I'm going to try to put it up on the table. I guess I didn't take all the golf balls out because it's still a little heavy. Uh, <laughs> so Ghost Golf is a, uh, an accessory brand. They make uh, a really nice kind of higher-end uh, golf bag. And uh, sorry about the noise there. But uh, this is the, the Any Day uh, bag, which they make in a bunch of colors, and each color has its own name. So this is the Any Day Maverick, which is the gray one. Uh, I also have the Patriot, which is the dark blue. Uh, they were kind enough to send in a 14-way top and a 7-way top. Uh, but they are the same bag, just different colors, different tops. So every one of their bags, uh, they make a handful of colors. They basically make all black, this gray, a black and white. So they make this one here is the Maverick uh, Black Ops bag, which is the gray one. The Any Day Katana, which is the all black. The Any Day Oreo, which is the white and black. The Patriot bag, which is navy blue. And then the Ronin bag, which is, uh, it looks like all black as well. I'd have to see what the difference between the uh, the Katana and the Ronin bag is. But really, really nice golf bags. Uh, they're really well built. They're not cheap. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go out there uh, uh, and say that right out of the gate. Uh, and then the Saya bag, which is all white, which is a pretty cool looking bag too. But yeah, not not cheap. I mean, these are a little bit higher end, full of features, all that. Um, so if you go to ghostgolf.com, you can check out all the Any Day bags, but really well built. The material is really nice. It's kind of like a synthetic leather on the outside. Uh, it's going to look kind of like, uh, you know, like Vessel, the uh, the Titleist uh, Led Links Legend bag, kind of that synthetic leather on the outside, uh, but really nice. Seems like it's going to hold up well. It's pretty, it seems pretty thick. Uh, and, and this isn't a crazy light bag. Like if you're somebody who's uh, going to be walking all the time, all the time, uh, this bag is not going to be crazy, crazy lightweight, but it's not bad. Uh, it's a little heavier right now just because I have, I think a jacket's still in here. I've got a bunch of golf balls, uh, tees, all the stuff that I usually have in here, wrenches, uh, all that stuff. But uh, a, a really, you know, like I said, the, the, the material on it, really, really nice. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, it's got uh, a decent amount of ghost logos, but I think it's pretty cool. It's uh, basically a little ghost with uh, clubs uh, across behind them. Uh, but it's got, uh, you know, ghost golf or, or ghost on the uh, the shoulder strap, uh, on, the, on the front side where it goes in against the cart, and then on the pockets as well. Uh, so it's got some ghost logos on it, but, you know, branding is, you know, part of the thing. But again, built built really well. Uh, the thing I kind of like to like, kind of in a sense, test bags is when you get them out, you pull them out, you set them on the ground, you put a little pressure on the top uh, of the bag, and you kind of like try to twist it and see how much like flex it has back and forth. Uh, and this one doesn't have a ton. It, it's pretty solid, pretty stable. But uh, you know, just the materials you start looking on it. Uh, like I said, the, the synthetic leather is really nice. Uh, it comes with two straps, so you get a double shoulder strap or a single sh shoulder strap. This one right now has the single on it uh, because I had it on an actual electric cart or uh, my you know, riding cart. Uh, I have had the double on it for most of the time I go to the range and all that. It's like four quick release snaps. It just comes off, goes on, uh, so you can switch between a single, you know, single shoulder strap uh, if you know you're riding or something like that. Just have something a little less out of the way. Snap on the double straps, you're going to walk uh, or, you know, have little ways to walk to the range or from your car. And, uh, you know, if you're going to use like an electric car, like uh, I use like a Moto Caddy, you can just unsnap the whole thing and have no strap uh, whatsoever and just it'll be out of the way. Uh, but super easy to do. It takes a few seconds when I swapped them out uh, the other day. I mean, it, it, it took, you know, 15 seconds to do. You just unsnap them, snap in the new ones and, uh, and, and off you go. Uh, and I kind of like that. A lot of the bags uh, that I have now seem to have that feature and, and at first i kind of like never really thought about like well why would i you know why would I ever take the straps off or whatever having them like dangle around in a push cart especially on like a muddy wet day or whatever they get wet they get you know mud on them all that you just take them off you know throw them in the back of your car put them back on when you need them uh and it's it's so fast and easy that it's not an inconvenience so it's it's, it's really nice uh but yeah put the single strap on just to carry it from the car to the clubhouse 
excuse me, but the double strap works really well. Uh, it, it, it's well made. Uh, it looks really stiff when you kind of feel it, but then when you actually get it on your shoulder, it's pretty supple. Uh, you know, when you start looking at this, this material, you notice it's a little thicker. Uh, it's got a nice kind of like velour inside on the shoulder straps uh, on both the, the single and the double. But it's actually softer than it, than you think it is, and it actually adapts to your shoulders pretty well. Uh, it's, it's a pretty comfortable bag. Uh, the first thing you'll notice with uh, this bag uh, beyond the straps is it doesn't have a full length from top to bottom pocket on either side. So either side... You can carry it either way. If you want to have this where all the clubs are hanging off your right side, you can do that. If you want to flip it around and carry and have your clubs hanging out the left side, uh, you can do that. It's got both. So it's got two half pockets. Uh, they're big. They're, they're definitely bigger than like the, kind of the traditional uh, smaller pocket that you get on one side of the bag. They basically take up half the bag. Uh, and then both sides have like a little quilted section that would go against your back, uh, that kind of diamond quilt, which looks really nice, actually. It, uh, you know, it has that kind of high-end look to it. But you can wear it either way, which at first when I pulled it out, I was kind of like, oh, you're missing like the full length, you know, bat, you're in the full length pocket. And I was kind of like a little bit bummed with it. And then I loaded it up uh, the other night to go play. And like I had a jacket in there. I had, you know, my wrenches, my sun, you know, sunscreen, you name, all the stuff that I normally carry between a full, full length pocket on one side and a half on the other. All the stuff that I carry because I took it out of a bag uh, that I've been using for a long time and it all fit in there with no problem. So it, it, it actually isn't bad, um, you know, and especially there's people who don't carry near as much stuff as I do. I carry a ton of stuff. Even if it's like 90 degrees out, I seem to be, you know, I'll carry an extra jacket or a vest or, you know, a bunch of gloves, whatever. I, I, I'm kind of a pack rat when it comes to, to golf bags, and it, it isn't bad. I, I do have to say, like, I, I think, you know, on some colder fall, whatever days where you would carry more layers uh, in there, you know, being in the north, uh, up here in Detroit, you do have, as you get in, you know, some of the spring days, some of the fall days, you do carry maybe like a vest and a jacket or, you know, a long sleeve layer or something like that, just to kind of make sure that you're going to be warm out there. Uh, it, it might get a little cramped uh, at that point, but for the normal everyday stuff of like you get into summer and you don't need to carry, you know, jackets and all that stuff, everything fit perfectly. I had actually the jacket I'm wearing now, which is just like kind of a lightweight Travis Matthew kind of, you know, hoodie. Uh, I had it packed in there along with, you know, as I said, some sunscreen, uh, some you know, UV arm sleeves, uh, extra, I had like four or five gloves in there. Uh, on the other side, I had, you know, wrenches and whatever. So, I mean, I, I had a decent amount of stuff in there. I had my range finder, all that. And uh, the side pockets, as much as there isn't a full length one, uh, it, it works pretty well with the two that it does have. Um, so, and then on the front, you've got your kind of traditional pockets where you have your magnetic pocket that most people, I guess, use for a range finder. Uh, I'm a guy who uses it for tees <laughs> and, and other like, little accessories. Uh, and I do have to say the one, the, the thing about this little pocket, which is pretty good, one, the magnet is really strong. So uh, when you close it, it closes. I, I've had a few bags that uh, either the magnetic kind of uh, trim that's there is either kind of like just like indented or deformed a little bit from manufacturing and it doesn't close quite as tight. This one snaps shut and it snaps shut really well. It stays shut. It's really secure. But I like that the pocket, <coughs> excuse me, is not only do you open it and it's like a velour line. So it's like, you know, kind of line like your, your valuables pouches. If you do want to keep your range finder in there, it's not going to scratch it up or beat it up. And then on the inside, on the outside, the flap, it's actually got like a little mesh, like extra little pocket built in there. And for me, I, like I said, I use this for tees, ball markers, uh, a little bit of a, I use like birdie tape uh, if you got like a callus on your hand or something like that. Uh, tees, ball markers, uh, or ball repair, you know, divot repair tools, ball markers, all that little stuff I put in this pouch. And I like the fact that I can actually put my like uh, divot repair tool uh, maybe a ball marker, my chapstick, what I can kind of separate from the tees. So when I go into this pocket, I don't have to like dig through the tees to find where's my divot repair tool. Uh, it's right there on the side, you know, on the side in that little mesh pocket. And it's kind of nice that it has that just a little bit of organization. And again, it's one of those things where I think if you look at it, you know, at the first glance, you just kind of go, okay, whatever. And then when you actually start thinking about where you're going to put stuff, it's kind of a nice spot to, uh, to, to shove some things and uh, put some of the things that you want to separate. Uh, if you do use that pocket for something else other than and, you know, a range finder. Uh, I've got a nice little, uh, you know, marker pocket uh, over there. They actually give you a marker. They give you like a kind of a little a bit of accessories. Uh, there's like a little, uh, you, know, you know, clip that you clip on a ball that you can put like straight lines on. Uh, they give you a, like a, a, a bag tag. 
and then it has these kind of like uh, they play play fearless, uh, play fearlessly little uh, zipper pulls, and they've got a couple other ones that it comes with uh, as well. So if you you know break one, lose one, they've got some smaller ones that just say ghost on them. Uh, so if these are too long or too big, they have some smaller ones in there that you can swap them out with. Uh, but just kind of a nice little touch there of, of things like that that uh, that are on there. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, then it's got the big pocket uh, in the back, which, uh, again, I use for uh, golf balls. I know some people use it for other things. Uh, it's kind of nice when you open it up. Uh, inside the liner just says, like, ghost all in there, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I use that for golf balls. It's a big pocket. It'll hold a lot of stuff. You could easily put a dozen golf balls, your driver wrench, your, you know, other stuff in there with, with no problem. Uh, and then, you know, it's just got a traditional zipper on it. Both sides of this pocket uh, set up on the front have water bottle holders, and they've got uh, that little bit of, like, insulation material on them as well. Uh, now, when I first put the my water bottle in there, which is just like a stainless steel Golf The Burex, like, you know, 32-ounce bottle or something like that, uh, it, it doesn't fit super snug, uh, but they do on both sides have these little uh, drawstrings that you can pull and tighten on. Uh, and they do pretty well. Uh, I do have to say, like, with mine loaded down with ice, all that, it didn't feel like it was crazy secure. Uh, you know, like, you know, if it were to be bumping down the fairway in my, my uh, moto caddy, uh, I'd be a little wary of maybe it popping out uh, eventually. But for the most part, it was uh, in there pretty good. And you can hold two in there, which is kind of nice. Uh, I like having uh, the extra water bottle, especially when the summer hits. Uh, I would usually take, like, my metal one with some ice and all that and then put a, a standard water bottle on the other side, just like, you know, a regular plastic one. Uh, but, uh, you know, n nice to have both uh, on there. It, of course, the bottom of the ball pocket has the uh, Velcro kind of closure on the bottom, so you could take this whole back panel off if you wanted to, take it, get it embroidered, uh, or you can just rip this thing open on the back and get under uh, into the ball pouch and make sure you don't lose anything or have anything floating around in there. So the pocket setup is really nice. Uh, and then I'll also on the outside of the half pockets on the side, there is a cooler pocket on both sides. So these are, you know, line cooler pockets. They've got a magnetic closure on them, uh, which is kind of nice. And they're pretty big. You could fit two big water bottles, a couple cans in there, depending on how much stuff you put in the pockets. Uh, if you don't put a lot in the pockets, you could probably fit a couple cans of, uh, you know, soda or anything like that <laughs> that you'd want to keep in there. Uh, you know, don't bring things onto the course that you're not allowed to, but uh, they've got, you know, twin cooler pockets on both sides, uh, you know, magnetic closures, and they're pretty secure. Uh, the magnetics they use, the magnets they use are, are pretty solid there. They keep that pocket shut uh, really, really well. Uh, you got a nice handle up top that's got, uh, you know, kind of a uh, quilted, you won't really see it, but it's kind of like a diamond pattern quilted uh, a handle with a little like, uh, you know, synthetic leather on top. Uh, which is nice. It's just, you know, those nice little touches like that. Uh, the pockets on the side are kind of those water resistant, rubber sealed. And then the valuables pouches, uh, there's kind of two of them uh, on the top of these half pouches, which is kind of nice because it's easy to just really drop in uh, the stuff that you want instead of going in from like the side. You can just drop your wallet, keys, watch, uh, whatever there. And those are water resistant as well, have the rubber lined uh, top zippers on them so they should keep, keep things fairly dry uh, and out of the way. And then when they're there, uh, if you're like, you know, have like a moto caddy or a three wheel push cart or something like that, they're actually not an angle. So the water is going to kind of hit and run off anyway. It's probably not going to sit on top of that pocket uh, and keep those things, uh, you know, really, really dry, which is nice. So you get to the legs uh, and the legs are, you know, on the back side here, you've got the legs. It's got like a little ghost pattern uh, embroidered on the top, which is nice, you know, right on the back side. And then the legs here are, uh, you know, kind of they look like carbon fiber. Uh, I know there's been some things said about carbon fiber legs, and people have cut some off other brands. I'm not cutting these off. Uh, but the leg action is is good. It, it does take a little more force to get them to kick out. Uh, so if the bag's empty, like when you first get it, you pull it out of the box, uh, it, it, you go to set it down. It takes a little push to get the thing to kick out. Uh, and then they want to retract pretty hard. So until you get some, some balls and clubs and all that in there, they, they do, they do want to retract uh, pretty good, which, which is nice though. Cause when you do carry it, you pick it up, those legs snap back, uh, you know, they're out of the way. They're not going to be dangling or, or, you know, getting in the way or anything like that. Uh, there is a, a little elastic band down near the bottom feet. You can tuck those into, uh, if you're going to use, you know, a push cart or riding cart to make sure they stay up and out of the way. Uh, but the leg action is, is really good. Uh, it's pretty solid. Uh, sta stability wise, it seems pretty stable. They're not the widest legs out of anything I've ever used. Uh, so on some, you know, slightly sloped uh, or slanted uh, lies, it, it, it feels like, you know, it, 
it could tip over if you really messed with it. it I had no problem with that. Uh, I, I wish they were just maybe a hair wider uh, th than they are, but a, a really good setup there. And like I said, the leg action in terms of out and in is really smooth uh, and really kind of strong. You know, when they retract back, they snap back, and you don't have to worry about. Uh, about that, uh, you know, them dangling and things like that, which I know with, you know, some other brands that had been, you know, an issue. Uh, and then the top on it, and as I said, this one's the 14-way for the any day. You can get the exact same bag in the 7-way. Uh, it's a very nice plush kind of velour up top. Uh, very well padded. Uh, everything goes in there really well. Uh, the bottom of the bag works awesome. It doesn't have any bunching, anything like that. Uh, when I was putting in, uh, you know, clubs and uh, different clubs, even if you're throwing in kind of like a super stroke grip, something like, or a putter with like a super stroke grip and uh, some slightly larger grips, it has no problem with anything catching on the bottom. <coughs> they just, uh, everything gets in there pretty well, stays in place. And everything has a place uh, in a 14-way divi divider. Now, it does have one nice kind of like big opening, uh, or kind of two. It's got the big one in the back, uh, which you'd, brought, you'd use for putter uh, more than likely. A little wider. Uh, you should be able to fit most larger grips. If you're like a 5.0 super stroke, it may get a little tight in there. Uh, but anything else should work totally fine. And then in the middle, it's got kind of like a bigger section or a bigger opening and honestly like so when i went and played the other day i had two drivers in here i put both drivers in there no problem getting them in and out they didn't you know rub they didn't catch on each other uh anything like that so you could go, do 15 clubs with uh with no problem they uh they easily get in there and uh <coughs> excuse me and uh and, and everything sorts out there really really nicely so uh, you know, the, the bag is really solid. They did a really nice job with it. Uh, it's got a big plastic uh, handle to kind of grab it uh, out of your trunk and that, and, and out of your truck, your back seat, wherever you keep your bag. Uh, it's got a nice plastic handle at the top, just above where the putter would go. So easy to get in and out. Uh, it, it's, you know, really comfortable. It worked really well. Fits on the cart well. Uh, you know, when I played with it there, uh, it, it fit on the, the, the uh, Moto Caddy pretty well also. Um, you know, anything that has kind of the legs extended. On those type, uh, you know, push carts, they they, they sit pretty well. Uh, you got to make sure to kind of tighten down the straps on there. But uh, overall, just a really really good stand bag. Uh, you know, you know, taking it to the range, setting it down, uh, all those things. I never had once where I felt like you know it was going to fall over or anything like that. I, I feel like the material on it is definitely going to hold up really well. Um, it, it's definitely going to be easy to clean if it gets dirty. You know, the gray is not going to show much much dirt, which is nice. But uh, you know, it, it's got a material that you can feel is going to be. You know, pretty easy to clean, pretty easy to, uh, you know, maintain. Didn't notice anything there with rubbing on the strap uh, on, on the cart. I just, you know, ran it kind of under the handle there, uh, and, you know, it, it, it did fine. It didn't leave any scuff marks, any marks like that, that, uh, that anything I've noticed. But uh, overall, Ghost did a really nice job. It, it's a really solid bag, uh, really well built. It's, it's, you know, like I said, not the craziest, lightest bag, uh, and it's not, it's not built for the person who wants insanely lightweight or if you want absolute maximum storage. Those two things uh, it may slightly lack at uh, just a bit, uh, but other than that, I think it's extremely well built. I think for most players, it's going to have enough storage for what you want, uh, and I think it's going to be a bag that that lasts a, a long, long time. Um, the, like I said, the 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 other, I'll give it a slight knock only because I don't love, and I understand why they do it, but the uh, the towel holder, which this again is going to be the tiniest gripe, but the towel holder on it is a little bit too small. When you go to run a towel through there, it just is it it gets kind of caught up it needs to be just a little bit bigger it has the nice thing where you can basically take it off so if you like had your towel in there it does come out uh this uh metal ring and it is metal which is kind of nice so it's it is dur durable um but i wish it was just a little bit bigger uh like i was using so i, I carry two towels i carry one of those kind of microfiber i've got a golf bricks like microfiber one uh that i carry and then i've got like a terry cloth kind of towel to get in the grooves and even with the thinner microfiber one it doesn't it, it still took a little little kind of effort to get into that loop uh and then get it out as well so it's uh i wish that part was a, a, a little bit nicer um and then i wish they had just a slightly better umbrella holder this one here it's just got the drawstring uh the adjustable drawstring at the top uh and the little holder for like the tip of the the, the umbrella at the bottom uh, i wish it had like a, a, a third little spot or piece of material that i could slide into just to be a little bit more durable uh, or a little bit more secure but th those are my my only gripes about the bag that uh, that i really have everything else really really good it, it, it's built really well uh, i think it's one of those bags that uh 
you know, you, you invest a good amount of money into it, you're going to get a lot out of it in terms of how long it lasts, all that. And it's a pretty cool bag. I've had, uh, you know, when I showed up to it, uh, my buddy who I was playing with uh, the other day was just like, what is that? Like, I mean, he noticed, like, the little red uh, zipper pulls immediately. and was like, well, that's a cool bag and kind of checked it out. And it's, it's one of those things where even though it's a subtle, all-gray color, it still kind of stands out, and, uh, and it's a really nice bag. So Ghost did a great job on it. I think uh, the any day, <clears throat> they did solid. Again, you get your choice of 7-way and 14-way. Um, you know, I have the blue in the seven in the in the seven way. It's one of the guys in the office kind of wants it, but we're gonna see. I might have to fight over it. I might uh, have to fight him for it and uh, and see if I can keep it. But uh, you know, Ghost Golf did a really nice job. They also has some like accessories and stuff that you can get kind of like to buy with the bag as like a bundle. So uh, there's a lot you can do. But each bag is it, it can be had in a seven way or a fourteen way. Uh, the fourteen seems just a hair bigger uh, in terms of roundness compared to the seven way, but other than that, they have the same uh, you know same pouches, same everything, the same layout. So uh, a really cool bag. But like I said, if you go to ghostgolf.com, check out all the uh, uh, the any day bags, and then uh, also they've got a bunch of other uh, kind of cool accessories and all that uh, to kind of go with it. So uh, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, just a, you know, kind of a cool brand uh, and what everything they do. So check out the uh, any day bags. Uh, they did a great uh, great job with them. So thank you, Ghost, for sending me that and I uh, appreciate uh, getting out and using it. Now, before we get into the next item, uh, you know, I want to let you know this also, this show, you know, is brought to you by Olakai. And Olakai is a Hawaiian footwear uh, maker, makes extremely comfortable golf shoes. I'm a big fan of their sandals, been wearing them for years. But right now, for the Masters, they've got a specially inspired limited edition shoe collection that commem- commemorates the season opener. Paying homage to a lone palm tree that still stands on the most famous golf course in Georgia. The palm is a reminder of a shared spirit between Georgia and Hawaii and our way of reminding the world that Aloha can be found anywhere. So Olakai's got a whole load line called the Lone, Pine, Lone Palm Collection. Very, very cool. It's all inspired uh, by, you know, this major going on. A lot of greens, a lot of yellow, you know, green, yellow, palm trees kind of etched in. Uh, you know, three different shoe models. Really, really cool. I like kind of all of them. Uh, one's like an all-green slip-on, a little palm trees. Uh, but really good traction. Olakai makes a great sole uh, for traction. They've got a few inf- big-name name, big name influencers who wear their shoes. Uh, but I've always loved their stuff. Extremely comfortable. Uh, this it just fits really well right out of the box and uh, yeah the golf shoes look awesome so uh, check out olakai.com check out the the lone palm collection and also if you want to jump in in the golf the vrx forums we are doing a giveaway for the lone palm collection as well so you can go win yourself a pair of shoes and uh and get them that way but uh olakai uh, dot com check them out uh, great shoes like i said i've been a big fan for a uh, a long long time So the final thing we're going to get into uh, talking about is a putter shaft. And uh, putter shaft-wise, you guys know I'm a big fan of graphite putter shafts. And I've reviewed most of them. I'm trying to think if there's any that I really have. I haven't haven't reviewed the Acura. haven't reviewed, uh, uh, what is it, uh, VA Composites. But most of the other ones I think I've gotten my hands on between, you know, KBS, BGT, all that. Uh, But I got my hands on the Diamana putter shaft so uh yes mitsubishi has come as it's been on for a little bit uh but has the diamana putter shaft and i will say that the diamana putter shaft out of all of them is probably the coolest looking now there is an acro shaft that's pretty cool that has like kind of this spread toe weave i haven't seen it in person but diamana kind of or mitsubishi guys kind of killed it with the the look of this uh diamana putter shaft so uh it's got this spread toe fabric up in the top uh up near the handle section uh, that you can see under kind of a gloss, and then it fades into just straight black down near the you know to the tip where it gets into the putter. Uh, you've got a little flower band that goes around the whole thing, so a 360s little flower band around there. Uh, the Diamana surfboard, and then uh, they make it in a 105 and 135 gram, two different models. This one here is the 105, uh, 105 and they make two different flexes for so the 105 only comes in one flex which is the 1.0 which is this one here and then in the 135 you can get a 1.0 or a 2.0 so depending on how stiff you want to go the 1.0 is going to be a little softer two is going to be a little stiffer but in this 105 they only make it in uh the the 1.0 flex so 
visually really really good looking put, uh, putter shaft i think it looks really great and and here uh down on kind of my basement with even the lights and all that it, it doesn't do it justice the uh when you get it out in the sunlight and you can actually really see the spread toe on it uh you i, I just caught myself kind of looking at it and i i put this in the the betnardi bb1 wide head uh so it is a pretty cool combination with the black putter head uh, into the black shaft with the weave on it uh, it is just awesome looking. So this is probably one of the best looking putter shafts, uh, at least I have ever had. Uh, it's one of the best I've ever seen. It just looks really, really good uh, in here. So it's subtle, but it is, you know, still super cool. So yeah, this one here, it uh, basically is made from, uh, it's got 24 ton uh, carbon that runs full length. It's got a 6K woven fabric, which is actually what you see up here. Uh, these little diamonds, uh, it's a 6K woven fabric. Uh, and then uh, like, you know, all Mitsubishi beachy shafts, they use like really low resin so you get the maximum carbon in there uh, to enhance feel and then uh you know all these uh you know it's got full length carbon plies in it as well uh just to keep the stiffness uniform and, and how they want it so uh a very cool shaft uh, i think they did an awesome job with it uh and you know both all, all three shafts come in 38 uh i'm sorry 36 inch blanks so you're not gonna be making broomsticks or anything like that with these they are 36 inches so you're probably gonna you could do some counterbalance stuff a little bit uh if you want like the 135 and went a little long you kind of maybe do a little bit of a counterbalance build uh but uh you know they're, they're a little bit more limited here with the uh uh with these in terms of you know weights and lengths and all that um, now, interesting enough, so this one here, it's it's a 105, or listed as the P105, comes in at 108 grams uncut, so by the time you get it cut down, it probably plays right about 105 grams, uh, comes in, in, all three of them only come in taper tip, 355 tapers, uh, you know, outside butt diameters are a little bit small, on a little bit small compared to others, uh, 0.596, uh, most of the stuff you see out there usually is over 600, but 0.596 for all of them, over 596 for the 105. Uh, and then 595 for the uh, P135 1.0, and then the 2.0, the stiffer one, is, is 0 0.602, so a little bit bigger there. Uh, and then the torque rating on these, the 105, 1.8, and the 135s are 2.5. So this is the lowest torque uh, version of them all. Um, but uh, like I said, really good look. I love the look of it coming out of there, uh, taken out of the box. I, I just wanted to install it so, so badly. So uh, installed in this head here, and then... Uh, uh, once cut it down to my 33 inches, like I always play it and, you know, went out there. Now I do have to say the 1.0, probably the most, the second most flexible graphite shaft, uh, I had the, uh, Fujikura MC 115 in like the, uh, smooth is extremely soft. That thing is probably the softest putter shaft I've had. This I'm going to say is probably a little bit closer to a traditional steel shaft, uh, in terms of flex. I don't think it's too much stiffer than that. I think it's pretty much right there. Uh, you know, with this, you can kind of see, again, on YouTube, you can see me kind of bend it a little bit. Uh, it's it's a little easier to bend. It's got just a touch of waggle to it when you set it down. You know, when you set it down in a putt and you, you give it the old little waggle test, it's got just a touch of waggle. Nothing too crazy, uh, but just a little bit there. And honestly, a lot of times adding that little bit of softer flex just gives you a little bit more feel. And when you come to a putter, a lot of people, that's what they want. You know, when they get a putter in their hands, they want to have a uh, feel to it. They want to, you know, feel the, the impact, feel where it is on the face. They want that sound, all that vibration, uh, all those things. So a little bit softer there. Uh, and also a little bit softer can play with a slightly longer uh, slower tempo putting strokes. So if you're somebody who takes the, the club back a little farther, uh, has a little slower tempo going into the ball, you don't quite a kind of like jab at it or anything like that. Uh, the slightly softer flexes can feel a little bit better and, uh, and the timing portion of it could be good uh, for those type of players. But took it out of the course and yeah, a little bit more flexible than I typically would, would want. I, I think I've become so used to the super stiff, uh, you know, the LA golfs, the, the Fuji MCs, even the, uh, the KBS GPS, which is probably the softest out of those, uh, is probably a little bit stiffer than this. Um, so it, it was a little, I wouldn't say discussion, but it was, it was interesting when I set it down to, to notice that it was just, uh, uh, a little bit more flexible uh than i expected it to be but right out of the gate uh putting with it i mean distance control was like spot on the um <clears throat> i was out at the uh, i put it been putting a bunch down here uh, on my putting mat with it but then you know taking it out to the putting green as well uh i got I, when i went out and played got there early the putting green was rolling super fast the practice green sorry the practice green at st Clair shores was rolling super fast it was super firm uh really fast but right out of the gate like i putted really well with it i was i was putting balls right next to the hole from you know 20 feet and all that i even made one or two but just putted really well with it uh right out of the gate it took no 
kind of like getting used to, uh, you know, the distance control or the feel or anything like that. I just, you know, took my normal putting stroke and, uh, and really hit some, some quality putts out there, uh, with this thing. Then got to the course and the greens were totally different. The greens were so much slower, so much longer, so much bumpier, uh, than the practice green. But on the practice green, I, I was killing it. you know, as, as long as, you know, I had the read right of how much break, uh, and you know, you, you put it, you know, the, the right speed on it. You know, the, like I said, the distance control portion was fine. Even a little bit of the miss hits, uh, were, were still really stable. They stayed online really well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, because the, the nice thing too with this one wide is that it is a, a beached putter. It's got uh, the sound slot on the bottom. And when you miss it on certain putts, you know, you audibly know, you know, that you missed it. So, um, you know, knowing that I hit a few putts off the toe, hit them off the heel, things like that, uh, you know, the, the accuracy of it, the, the ball stayed online really well, really didn't move at all uh, in terms of, uh, you, you know, even though it's a softer shaft, still missing on the heel, missing on the toe, there just wasn't any twist uh, of that head, and the ball just stayed online, and it, it maybe just missed a, a hair left or a hair right, uh, but nothing that you know, you noticed a big drop off in distance or uh, a ball going way right or left. It was really, really stable, uh, even for having that kind of softer flex and feel to it. Uh, out on the course, again, uh, I didn't putt great, but it was, again, I, I kind of got used to hitting these, you know, softer putts and then getting out to the course and having to hammer everything to the hole. Uh, but, you know, long lag putts, the same thing, accuracy-wise, really good. Uh, the ball stayed on line, you know, it, whatever line you, you picked uh, and, it, and went, that's where the ball was going. Uh, and, and honestly, I, I hit some really good long lag putts as well uh, that, uh, you know, just rolled up, you know, really close to the hole. You know, that those gimme ranges where, you know, people just kick them back to you. And uh, even had, a you know, one on like the, what was it, the, I think it's the fifth hole. Like a hundred and it was playing downwind. I think it was like one sixty, but playing down or one sixty five, playing downwind. Um, and I hit, uh, you know, I kind of I hit an eight iron past the hole, uh, and then I was kind of little on the left side, so I had to go kind of across the green, and the pin was on the far right, and it was in this weird little spot. There's over on the right back. There's like this little bowl that kind of sits there, and the back of the green kind of flares up, so everything kind of trickles down there. And the pin was just in front of that area, and I had to putt kind of across it, and you know, just hit a really nice putt. I picked my line that I thought it would go down, it's going to break right, and then it was going to either stay straight or maybe come back and touch on the le- uh, uh, to the left on the very end. And I picked it perfect, rolled it up to about four inches, uh, and, and it was just you know, it didn't come back to the left enough. But uh, just it really had a lot of confidence in putting with it, and, and it wasn't anything where you know, a lot of times you put a new putter or something like that in the bag, and you're a little tentative, uh, all that. You could be aggressive. You could hit the putts you don't need to hit. You didn't have to change anything with your stroke, and you know it. It just you know made putts. Um, now softness on it, uh, I do have to say it, it. It it doesn't change up the putter a whole lot. Uh, a lot of graphites to me, they make the putter sound and feel much softer than it's you know it did with a steel shaft. And this one here didn't change a whole lot. I feel like it, it may be a smidge you know softer, but for the most part, it really stayed pretty true to what it was. Like it kind of sounded and felt just like it, this putter did with the steel shaft in it. Uh, it didn't really change uh, a, a whole lot of that. I still felt the vibration on miss hits. You could still uh, kind of feel in your hand that impact that you made off the face. Uh, you got that audible sound uh, as well to kind of go with it. Uh, but it really kind of has the kind of the, the closest to steel feel. Uh, of any of the graphite shaft, full graphite shafts uh, that I've hit, you know, so the, the stability uh, two piece, you know, steel and, and graphites kind of have a little more uh, vibration to them, but everything else kind of, you know, moots the putter just a touch. This actually keeps it, you know, pretty similar. Uh, you know, if, if you're someone who's kind of worried about making a transition from graphite to, or from steel to graphite, because you might lose a little bit of that vibration and feel the Diamata really, you know, keeps things, you know, pretty similar, uh, and, 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 you know, gives you that sound, gives the feel, but then keeps that, uh, that, that really good stability and, uh, kind of forgiveness that, uh, that the graphite offers. So I was pretty, uh, you know, it was pretty interesting to, to hit those putts and, and realize not much had changed from this steel shaft that, uh, that was in it originally, but, uh, overall, you know, short putts, really easy as long as you aligned it right it was in um <clears throat> thankfully i didn't really have any kind of like yippy type putts uh that i usually uh have out there i uh, hit everything pretty darn solid and yeah i just caught myself the whole round just kind of on the green just looking at this thing just looking at the flowers looking at the weave all that stuff uh it just kind of caught my eye uh, all the time but it performed really well i thought uh you know accuracy wise it, it worked really well whether you hit it off the toe or hit it off the heel it didn't really waver that much in terms of uh you know where that uh, the starting 
starting line was uh, for this uh, this putter. And compared to you know hitting this with steel and then putting this graphite in it kind of right away, hitting them both, it didn't really change anything up. Now the, now the 105 weight is a little less than say the steel shaft that was in it. I didn't really notice a huge, you know, in terms of the feel, like throughout the stroke, it didn't really change a whole lot. Um, I feel like it was pretty much the same. Uh, you know, I didn't really notice it being too much lighter weight. I should have thrown in the swing weight, swing weight scale just to see, uh, you know, what the difference is. But, um, you know, in terms of feeling that head weight or extra head weight or anything like that, didn't really feel like that was a, a thing. It, it kind of played... Uh, pretty much the way it did before which was which is kind of nice because if you're you know adding some of that uh that, you know that stability and some of that uh, uh accuracy that these graphite models offer you and you can kind of do it with still having you know the same feel as as steel and all that you know it just makes that transition easier so uh the build of it was was pretty simple and then it was just uh you know go out and play so it was uh, a really you know, solid. I, I really like the Diamond. I think they did a nice job. I'd love to try the 135 2.0. Uh, I think that there being a little bit stiffer and all that would be uh, kind of more right at my wheelhouse. But the the 105 weight wise, I don't mind it. Uh, it was pretty darn good here. I, I if you, probably if you handed me a 135 and a 105, I don't I mean I don't know. But you know, with this one here from steel to this 105, I didn't notice a huge difference in kind of the weight balance change. Uh, and honestly, the feel I thought uh, this thing kept it pretty close to. Uh, you know, pretty close to that, that that steel feel. So a really nice job by Mitsubishi. I think it's a pretty cool shaft. And yeah, I think my recommendation is if you're someone who is making that transition, uh, want to keep the same feel and everything is steel, uh, but you want that little bit more stable uh, club head, uh, I think the Diamata, the, the putter series, the 105 is pretty good. The 135, uh, if you prefer a little bit more weight, uh, would be a, a really, really good option. But uh, they nailed the looks as well. The looks of it is just is just super, super cool. So um, if you go to MitsubishiGolf.com, you can check out more on the Diamata putter, uh, you know, the low torque, all that, kind of what it's built into. And, uh, yeah, hopefully they expand it a little bit. I'd love to see a few more options like a 105, 2.0, uh, 105, uh, with a 2.0 flex, uh, you know, I'd love to see that added. I'd love to see 370 tips uh, added in as well for so, some putters. So uh, it'd be gr- great to see them uh, expand on the line just a little bit. But looks wise, don't change it. It looks awesome. Or maybe even go to like you know the 105 in blue and the, the 135 in white or something. You know, just kind of like mess with the little blue boards and white boards and all that. It'd be pretty cool. But uh, the P105 is really solid. Uh, I was a big fan. So, again, MitsubishiGolf.com. Check out the uh, Diamata putter shaft. Uh, They did a nice job with that thing. And, uh, yeah, that thing's definitely in uh, the rotation. So we'll see... How it, how you know what it does beating out some others, but uh, it's definitely going to be in the rotation this year, and it's definitely going to see some more time out on the course. Uh, be real excited! I'll, I'll be really excited to once they get the greens kind of mowed and a little shorter and all that, uh, how it performs. So that's all I've got. Hopefully, you guys have a great rest of the Masters. Uh, if you're watching this on any or you're listening on whatever platform uh, for your podcast, please like, subscribe, follow, whatever you can do on there. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Appreciate all that. Uh, if you want to watch this on YouTube, you can go to uh, just search Club Junkie. It should come up that way. Uh, and then uh, please follow me on Instagram, uh, Club Junkie Pod. I think I'm going to try to do a Q&A tomorrow. I know it's uh, Masters Thursday, but hey, a lot of people are probably, you know, not doing as much work because they're hanging out watching golf. So, you know, let's do it. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great one. Remember, this episode was brought to you by Titleist, Team Titleist. If you want to do prototype testing, get access, early access to things, join a really cool community that's just, you know, golf people, check out Team Titleist. www.titleist.com forward slash Team Titleist, all one word. But thank you guys, and we'll talk next week.